Hello class, welcome to the final segment in lecture three, which is our lecture about the hip symmetric equation. And in this final segment, I'll give you guys sort of an exercise to work through to sort of test your understanding of the hip symmetric equation. So again, just like the previous exercises, I'll just read out what the problem is and then uh, we'll kind of go from there. So what thickness can be expected between 500 millibars and 1000 millibars if the mean air temperature is freezing? At, so we'll say freezing is zero degrees Celsius. So uh, I'll go ahead and ask you to go ahead and pause the video, take about five to ten minutes and work through the exercise and see if you can arrive at an answer. I'll give you a few seconds to pause the video. All right, so now we'll go ahead and work through the solution. So and hopefully your solution looks something like uh, what's shown up on the screen here. So first off, we are of course going to be using the hip symmetric equation to solve this since we're trying to relate the thickness between two pressure levels to the mean virtual temperature throughout the layer of the atmosphere that we're looking at. So we're of course going to be using that equation. And this problem is more or less just a simple plug and chug. So we just simply plug in the value for the dry air gas constant, which is 287 joules per kilogram per Kelvin. And then the mean virtual temperature, keeping in mind that we use the ideal gas law to derive this equation. Ideal gas law is strictly using temperatures that are in Kelvin. So that means we also have to use temperatures in Kelvin when we use the hypsometric equation. So we simply plug in our mean temperature in Kelvin, which is zero degrees Celsius, which is 273 Kelvin. And then G naught, our acceleration due to gravity, 9.81 meters per second squared. And of course the two pressure levels. So this also can be kind of uh, interesting when you go to plug in the pressures. Usually you want to plug in the higher pressure on top when you're calculating the difference between two levels. It doesn't really, it shouldn't really matter because then you should pick up two negative signs that cancel each other out, but just something to be careful about. Be really careful about the pressures that you plug in here. Uh, just make sure that the, you're being consistent about what pressure level one should be and what pressure level two should be. But in this particular problem, there's not a whole lot of harm that you can do. You'll just get maybe a negative answer, which uh, won't be too big, too big of a deal, but on some of the future problems, when you use the hypsometric equation, this might be a bigger deal to worry about. But in this case, not so much. So we just simply plug in our pressure levels, so 1,000 millibars divided by 500 millibars, and that just simply simplifies down to the natural log of 2. And then we plug that into a calculator, we get a thickness that's roughly 5,500 meters. And this result is actually not that insignificant, because... There is a rule of thumb that forecasters like to use, especially when it comes to forecasting winter weather events. And one of the tools that forecasters like to use is to look at the thickness between the 500 millibar and the 1,000 millibar levels. If that thickness, the value that they use is closer to 5,400 meters, but if they see that thickness level is at 5,400 meters or something smaller, that indicates that the uh, layer between the surface and 500 millibars is below freezing. And if you've got a layer that's below freezing in the wintertime, that means that your precipitation is probably going to be snow, as opposed to maybe something like freezing rain or sleet, or maybe even just a regular cold rain. So this is one tool that forecasters can use to sort of diagnose environments that are maybe, maybe favorable for snow. Now there are a couple, in practice, and I already said this, in practice 5400 meter reference is used, but there are a couple of caveats to keep in mind about this rule of thumb. And that is that it doesn't work very well when you're working with a higher elevations. So at Denver, they sit about uh, one mile above sea level, which is uh, roughly two kilometers, give or take. So that then raises the question, how, how do you measure the temperature at 1,000 millibars if you're in Denver if your elevation is already at around 850 millibars? Of course, you can't measure a temperature that's you know, a mile deep into the ground. So you're not going to get an accurate reading for the mean virtual temperature between 1,000 millibars and 500 millibars. So this reference doesn't work very well. This reference of 5,400 meters between separating the 500 millibar and the 1,000 millibar levels, this reference of 5,400 meters doesn't work very well if you're trying to do a forecast for a higher elevation, in which case you might want to use uh, a different reference, say that thickness between 700 millibars and 500 millibars, or maybe even the thickness between 850 millibars and 500 millibars. And uh, that's a pretty simple exercise if you want to calculate that out. You just simply change your pressure levels, keep everything else the same, and then that would give you the rule of thumb that you would want to look for when you're going to maybe forecast an environment that's favorable for snow. But that's just another uh, sort of physical consequence slash application that we can use the hypsometric equation for. So fairly powerful equation in the grand scheme of things, but that's just sort of a uh, that's what this lecture was just designed to get for is 
get you uh get to get you sort of introduced to was just introducing this equation and some of the uses that it can have. So that's going to do it for this lecture and in the next lecture we will introduce uh, circular motion specifically talking about centripetal and centrifugal force. So with that I will see you all in the next lecture.